पर प्रभु भवर टूडे लेस पर्सन वी आर अर्ली वी आर अर्ली टूडे विल कम वी आर अर्ली अदरवाइज वी कम लेट बिकॉज ऑफ ट्रैफिक बट टूडे अर्ली Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya, Bhutale, Siva Kaya Bhakti Vena. Praise 
जो सो जस्ट प्लेन दिन में Om Ajnanam Timiran Dasya Jnanam Junasalakaya Chapsura Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Guru Venama Chua Gurudev has ordered me to speak a few words about this very beautiful song by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur called Bhimala Vaishnava. Srila Gurudev has explained that of all the words in our vocabulary, the most important word is when. To have that ardent desire to attain the Lord's mercy and always be asking when, when. When that desire becomes our only desire, at that time, the Lord and His pure devotee fulfills that desire. So what is the desire that Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur has. And what is the price that he's paying for the fulfillment of his desire? He's paying by his tears. He's explaining in the last verse that Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur is sitting in this secluded place in Godrum and shedding tears and weeping piteously that when will I attain the mercy of Mahaprabhu when will I attain the mercy of Rajendra Nandan Sham Sundar? That he will give me attachment, very strong and unprecedented attachment with the lotus feet of the pure devotee. One who has such attachment, he can achieve all perfections. All of his spiritual desires are fulfilled as explained by our other acharyas like Srila Narayan Das Thakur and Sri Guru Charana Padma. Everything is fulfilled by attachment to the lotus feet of the pure devotee. Attachment means that I'm engaging my mind, my words, and my bodily activities, and my sentiments of my heart in his service to carry out his order. Once that attachment is there, then automatically, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur explains, automatically my anartas, my lust, anger, greed, pride, illusion, and envy will vanish. Bhakti, pure bhakti, pure devotion to the Supreme Lord is situated in the heart of the Bhimal Vaishnava, that is the pure devotee who has no other desire than to serve Krishna. So because pure bhakti is there, when he is pleased by someone's moods and services, one who has full faith in, in Krishna and simultaneous faith or even more faith in Guru, to him all the imports of all the Vedic literatures are revealed. So that bhakti descends from the heart of the pure devotee into the heart of the disciple, and then all the good qualities manifest. So Srila Bhakti Thakur is praying, when, by the grace of that pure devotee, will all of my external activities be the same as my internal activities? In other words, when will I be free from hypocrisy? I'm saying, I'm giving a lecture. Everyone, chant Hare Krishna without offense. And I'm barely chanting, and my chanting, what I do do, is full of offenses. So that's hypocrisy. Or I'm showing that I'm chanting so nicely. But inside I'm thinking of profit, adoration, and distinction. So Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur is praying, when will my outside and inside, by the mercy of that pure Vaishnava, and when I have attachment for him, when will that be the same? By that attachment and by his mercy, I'll be able to chant the holy name of the Lord purely, and I'll be able to uh, become fully absorbed in the Lord's pastimes. So much so, he gives that rati, rati for his feet gives that rati for Krishna. 
So much so that just like the gopis who were singing their Venu Geet, as Srila Gurudev explained in Houston, and they actually became one with their song of separation. They entered into their, the words of their song, they became one at heart with what they were singing, and thus the pastimes of Krishna entered their heart, and they became participants in that and entered the forest by their moods. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur is praying, when will my chanting by the grace of the Bhimal Vaishnava become so pure that I'll be completely immersed in the pastimes of Lord Krishna? So weeping and praying, this is my only desire, then Krishna will fulfill that desire. And thus, I'll give up that body happily and enter into a higher state towards service to Krishna. Gurudev is always saying, you're all young and beautiful now, but soon your hair becomes white, you lose your teeth, you can't walk without a stick. He's always warning us that death is actually coming. So we pray, in praying to Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur that he'll give us his moods, that we can leave our body with that attachment to the pure Vaishnava as sitting before us now. Thank you. Those who want to attend Krishna praying, they must follow this kirtan. They should read and think the meaning of this song and accordingly they must follow. Otherwise Krishna Prem is very far away. Agyanat Mirandharsya Gyanan Janasalakaya Chakshurun Militam Jena Tasmai Sri Gurave Nama Bancha Kalpataru Bhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhyayevacha Patitanam Pamanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Nama Namo Mahabhadannaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gaurati Se Nama Gurave Gaura Chandraya Radhika Yaitadale Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tadabhaktaya Namo Nama Yam Prabhrajantam Anupetam Apetakrityam Dvaipayano Virahaka Tarya Juhava Putre Kitan Maitaya Tarbo Bhinegu Tam Sarvabhu Taridayam Munimanatosmi Tavai Vasmi Tavai Vasmi Najivami Taya Vina Iti Vikyaya Radhe Tangnay Mama Charanam Tite First of all, my Millions of opposiciences in the Lord's feet of my Paramaradhatam Guru Pātpadma Nitya Lila Pravishtam Vishnu Pāsishvan Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Goswami Maharaj. And same in the Lord's feet of my Shiksha Guru Nitya Lila Pravishtam Vishnu Pāsishvan Bhakti Vedan Swami Maharaj. And then my all Tridandi Samnashigan Vaishnavan and daughters Vaishnavi. We discussed tomorrow Yesterday. how Krishna came to Mathura with Thakru and in the way when they reached nearer to Mathura Near Jamuna, it was evening. So, Akrur stopped his Rath chariot and wanted to take bath in Jamuna and 
to do sandhya anhik. So he stopped the chariot and came down of the chariot and he went to the Jamuna. There was a kund and he went to take bath. When he was duki lagai, sinking in the water, when he was sinking in water, dipping, dipping. dipping. Oh, at once in water he saw Krishna and Baldeva are here. And then he come up, oh, what I saw in the water, Krishna, but I see that they are sitting on the chariot. Oh, perhaps I have done wrong, seen wrong, so again he but we do feel like oh, sank <laughs> in Jamuna river and saw there also. He saw that Krishna is very beautiful four-handed. Baladev like Sheshnar and on that Krishna is sitting. Very beautiful Chaturbhuj roof. Oh, Banmala in the neck. Crown on head. Very attractive. Then he knew, oh, really he is Parabrahma. And then he came up to the chariot and began to do so many stow and Stuti. Here one thing is hidden that Brat Brajendra Nandan Shamsundar and Rohini Nandan Ram they never give up Vrindavan, never go to other places. So by this Evident, Krishna and Baldev, Rohi Nandan, they returned back to Vrindavan and Vasudev Nandan, Krishna, Devki Nandan, Krishna and Rohi Nandan, Bal, Balaram, that is the uh, incarnation of Bal, Krishna and Baladev Prabhu of Braja. They went to Mathura. They killed Kansa, Charun, Mosti, Kovalya, Pida and others. Krishna never comes out of Vrindavan. He never kills any demons. In their body, Mahavishnu, all others, Ram, Vishnu, Narayan, all are there. So Vishnu Dwara Kare Shanghar. So what Asu Krishna has killed, really he has not killed. Oh, Mahabishnu, he killed all. Now from there, Akru took Krishna and Baldev in chariot, where Nanda Baba was uh, waiting waiting for Krishna and Baldev. Then Krishna met them and took some rest. Akru, he prayed that, Oh Prabhu, you and Nanda Baba and others should come to my house. But Krishna <coughs> told that, I will come but not now. First, for what I have come, I should do and then I will come to your house. Then Akru was sent and then Akru went to Kans and told that I have brought two brothers. First day Krishna from there camp, camp, camp. from there came they came to see Mathura Nagari. It was decorated very much. And 
even when blind persons heard that Krishna is coming, oh, they are taking other blind persons and began to run anyhow to see Krishna. And we have explained how the Rajkumari, princess of Jadwas, were felling flowers and so many things on Krishna. All are became very happy. And then he went to Dhanush Jagya, sacrificed Mahotsa, and anyhow he broke the who comes used to do puja. And then he killed all attendants and then returned back. In the night they slept there and Kansa was thinking, oh, that bow was very, very strong, strong. but he killed, uh, broken, broke as a child, boy, like a toy, yeah. broke like a toy. And toy. How it is? In the night when he was <coughs> sleeping, he saw a dream, I told you, that naked he is sitting on a donkey and face is behind. He had taken so much oil everywhere and Sindhu. And anyone is killing him. <coughs> and also, when he awoke, he saw that jackals are weeping, so many bad things are going. Then he became feared. Anyhow, next day, he ordered to decorate the arena. It was a very beautiful decorated. In the middle there was a high mancha, a place. On that, Kans was sitting on a golden throne with sword and dhal. Shield. Shield. And so many kings here and there on both sides they were sitting. Nanda Baba <coughs> went there and he gave his tax. And he was also seated on any place, high place. All the Rajkumari, princess of Princesses. Mathura, they also came and were sitting. So many Sajjan Sadhu Purush, they also were sitting there. In the meantime, Krishna um, comes ordered and Nagada the drum. The drum was beaten. And then Charun Musti, Sal Tosal Ko, all the wrestlers, oh, very big and very strong. strong, they began to go like this and jump in the arena. Thus, in the meantime, Krishna came in the front door of the arena. The, there was the elephant, Kubalya appeared. Oh, it was so strong like Indra. Oiravat. Eh? And it was given so much wine. Eh? wine, wine. wine. And then when Krishna came, he told, Oh Mahavat, Elephant driver. Please give up us. Give us give away. away. And if you are not giving, be careful. Careful. I will kill you and Dilemma. elephant bow. Please give him. But hearing this, that charioter of how elephant. Oh, became very curious. curious. 
serious and furious angry serious furious angry okay no problem and he took his uncle's god 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 elephant god 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 ha that is called god stick stick g o a d god g o a d god god go and he uh took the took it in the ear of elephant elephant and thus she became very very furious and ran towards krishna then how he killed very interesting <laughs> हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आईपी में हम लोग इस सेंस से नरोडा सुटो में परमात्मा गुरु पाद पद्म ओम विष्णु पाद अष्टोद सतोष सुमद भक्ति वेदांत श्लोक अमंगल सई महाराज एंड ओम विष्णु पाद परिवार का आचार्य वर्ज अष्टोद सतोष सुमद भक्ति वेदांत श्लोक नारायण सई महाराज आईपी में अभी सेंस से नरोडा सुटो में स्पिरिचुअल ग्रंथ साया नित्य लीला कृष्ण विष्णु पाद श्री भक्ति पद ज्ञान के सर्व सई महाराज एंड नित्य लीला कृष्ण विष्णु पाद प्रणाम that kongsa has sent putana agasuru bakasuru so many demons why kongsa not went himself to kill krishna in braj if this question may arise from his mind so guru dev told the answer about this question once kongsa thought okay let me go there and i can press the small boy krishna all the not mentioned in bhagavatam it came in as a like parampara in a sequence of from prajavasis kongsa went the way to braj as soon as he crossed the jamuna one old lady means jogmadevi was there he she grabbed him and deep in the jamuna immediate kongsa became very old lady and the prajavasis they are coming and insulting him and punching him like it call in braj gulcha who is coming kicking him punching him like this <laughs> and what to do someone told oh, you make out on cow patty he never did so she never did so so she could not do and she became very unhappy and she thought oh i am gone so how i can go mathura by this stage what people will tell me so many days have been passed one day jogma came will you come again in braj promise and he never come back braj again she told okay never again then again jogmaya devi took him and give deep in the jamuna then we can come sadane from there from there he never come to braj anymore so he invited krishna balade through akru although akru living with kamsa but he always respecting balade prabhu krishna and nanda baba when kamsa was sending to akru go and bring them akru told oh don't do this big mistake he is para brahma is bhagavan what is bhagavan chila rupa sai pada explain in his book sam with sindhu kamsa told how he can tell is bhagavan akru told oh he control the kaliyo kaliyo what kaliyo is it poisonous snake akru no 
He has so many holes. And this is control and make dance. Taka toy, toy, taka toy, toy. One after another, and press one after another foot. And vomiting blood. Comes out. Bogus thing. This poison a snake. Any one control any snake. Snakes are not can control. How we can have one? Okunu told, he lifted over them for seven days. How? Oh, this is a piece of it. Only art. How we can tell his Bhagavan? Go and get him. Over my order. Okay, okay, sir. I have no choice. I have to go. So now, Krishna and Goladev want to enter in the arena. The drum beating is going on. And all Mathura Nagari decorated very nicely, especially the arena. Why not? So when Krishna was in Braj, it mentioned Jayati Te Dhikam Yanma Nabraja Swayata Indira Sasadatrahi. Where Krishna took birth, Sir Lakshmi Devi, the goddess of fortune decorating the whole Braj. When Krishna is coming there, although his manifestation of Gajadanandan Samsunda, still Krishna is there. So it must nicely decorated. Then Krishna told, Oh, elephant driver, take it away from here. Otherwise, I will send you same planet where in charge is Maharaj Jam, the person who will death. I sent you and your elephant both same time. Elephant driver became very angry. He makes bring the elephant so many so much wine, huge quantity, and he chewed. Then, then he took the goat and put in his ear and pulled it and the elephant became very angry and the elephant are trumpeting so louder just like that it, big thing is going on, very tremendous thing and he grabbed for Krishna under his trunk immediately Krishna came out from there and gone behind to his feet again elephant is moving and searching him Again Krishna came and gave a punch and came under his belly. Elephant is searching. Why is that? Why is the boar? And his smelling again came like when a guru, the king of the uh, board, play with the snake sentai, like Varaha they play with Hiranaksha, Nishinga they play with Hiranagasipu in the same way. Krishna is playing with elephant. Sometime he going back, pulling his tail, and giving fist. Sometime came in front, again he grabbed. And God the two standing there. And all, the whole, Tosal, Kur, Chanur, Musti, all are waiting. When Krishna will come? Then Krishna, oh, no need to make more fun with I have to make so much fun going there. <laughs> so Peter went here. Then he came and running so fast through his belly and sit and immediately come outside, the other side. And he's searching. Then Krishna is sitting there and come out. Elephant could not understand. He thought Krishna is here. That is huge task. And hitting in the ground. After that, Krishna took up one task and by that task, Hit the elephant driver and taking the tail and moving and throw him, he expired. He died. And by that task, Balada Prabhu took one and Krishna and beat the elephant driver. Now they are entering in the arena. Look like so beautiful. For Krishna and Balada, no need to make any ornament. For human beings, to make them, to show them very nicer, have to put so many makeup, cosmetic. So many old and ornament, golden ornament, this and that, but for Krishna nothing needed. Some sprinkle of some drops of blood here and there, and they took the task on their shoulder and going like a hero, both of them. When they entered in the arena, Chanur Musti all are waiting there. And Gurudev told us described so many kings who pay tax to Kansa, they are sitting next to comes on both sides. And Nandava also there. Chanur and Chanur told to Krishna, oh, our duty to please king, because king is a representative of God. So a king will be pleased, the God will be pleased, and also a king will be pleased. So now we can do the wrestling match. 
Krishna was waiting for that, but extremely told, oh, you are merely a boy. It will be better, the match will be equal, age, and center all powerful. We are small boy, we are not young enough, and you like so huge mountain, it's not fair at all. But oh, you kill Putana, Aghasur, Bakasur, always you are wrestling in Dini cow raising, you are not merely a boy. Oh, you can fight with me, no problem. By force, Chanut pull him. And Mustik, and Chanut Tolo, Mustik can wrestling with Baradev Prabhu. Baradev can wrestle with Mustik. Then they start wrestling match. They are beating their thigh here, and sometimes they are touching their head, other head, sometimes pulling, some pushing. Oh. This expert in wrestling match, like Jiva Prabhu, they knows very well, and Sivaranda Prabhu. Then they started. But. After that, what happened? We shall listen from Sula Gurudev. Hare Krishna. When he killed that Kubalya api, entered in arena, keeping the task, task. task of elephant. Some blood were there. So Krishna was looking and Baldev very beautiful. When he entered in arena, then Mallanam Asini Nidang Naravara. Oh, you, Padmanam Maharaj, explain how he was container of all rasas. Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshur Rudvarikam Jena Asmai Sri Gurve So this very dramatic scene, how Krishna entered into this wrestling arena, how he now began to engage in this activity, this very chivalrous activity of wrestling with these wrestlers. Even though Krishna and Balaram, they appeared very sweet and soft like young teenage boys, and they looked extremely beautiful. The wrestlers looked so powerful with big, huge arms and legs, very muscular, very hard. But Krishna and Balaram looked so soft. So, while this wrestling uh, was going on, all the people in the arena, they were looking at Krishna and Balaram, and they were all experiencing from their own angle of vision that this personality, Krishna, was appearing to them in different ways. Why? Because actually, Krishna, he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is the absolute truth, and actually he is the source of everything that exists. And he himself, his very own personal form, is the embodiment of all rasa. In the Vedas it is told, raso vai saha, that Krishna himself, Supreme Lord, he is rasa. He is transcendental mellows, transcendental taste of all different varieties of wonderful uh, experiences of rasa. So that absolute truth, Krishna, although he is one supreme truth, but depending upon the angle of vision, depending upon the qualification of the onlooker, they will know him in different ways. They will see him and experience him differently. So that absolute truth, Krishna, when he entered into the arena, so many different types of personalities were sitting in the arena. There were the wrestlers, there was King Kamsa, there were different uh, types of very respectable people, there were other kings, there were the ladies of Mathura, there were the, the Vrishnis, the people of the dynasty, there were the cowherd people who had come from Braja also, there was Devaki and Vasudev, there were yogis in the audience. 
all these different personalities who were looking at Krishna, they all saw him differently. When Krishna was uh, coming towards the wrestlers, the wrestlers saw Krishna. And what they saw, they saw him as being as powerful as a thunderbolt. Uh, because they understood that this beautiful young boy, he's not an ordinary personality. He's the most powerful personality. They had already seen that he killed this great elephant, Kuvalayapid. So now they saw him directly through their own vision. Oh, he is, this, he is like a thunderbolt. Uh, then the men of Mathura, they saw Krishna because Krishna is the supreme perfect person who has appeared within this material world. So he is Naravara. Naravara means the best amongst the human beings. So when they saw him, they could not understand his godly nature, but they saw him as the most perfect personality who is appearing in human society. Then the women of, of Mathura, when they saw, the Mathura Ramani saw Krishna, they perceived with their eyes that Krishna was exactly the most attractive male personality, that he was as if Cupid personified himself had entered within the arena. As the cowherd men, uh, all the gopas that had come with Krishna uh, from Vrindavan, as they saw Krishna, they felt so much uh, parental love and affection for Krishna, and they considered him to be their very own relative. So they, uh, they became overwhelmed with the mood of Vatsalya seeing Krishna. When the very powerful kings, who were very sinful also, impious kings, who had been subdued by Kangsa, when they saw Krishna enter into the arena, they saw him as the personality who was appearing in this world that would chastise all of them and conquer all of them. When the parents of Krishna, Vasudev and Devaki, who were standing there with their arms chained together, their hands chained together, and they saw Krishna, they immediately became overwhelmed with compassion. Tears flowed from their eyes, very warm tears, tears of Vatsalya praying for Krishna. And now they began to feel uh, karunya, compassion for their beloved son, Krishna. They were fearful also that uh, Krishna and Balram would meet with some harm. When Kamsa, who was sitting on this huge golden dais, saw Krishna there, what did he see? Oh, here was his own death personified, walking into the arena. Everything that he had been fearing throughout his whole uh, last years since Krishna was born into this world, he was fearing that one day, one day, he will come and he will kill me. And now, as Krishna entered the arena and was wrestling with the wrestlers, oh, now Kamsa saw him as death personified. Then, the unintelligent people, very uh, ordinary people of the, in the material world, when they saw Krishna, they could only perceive that, oh, here is the very universal form of this cosmic manifestation appearing here in a human form. Huh? And then when the yogis who were present in the arena looked at Krishna, they became completely shanta, very, very peaceful. They were meditating upon Krishna, just like the yogis meditate within their hearts on the eternal form of the Supreme Absolute Truth. And when they saw Krishna, oh, here he is himself, the Absolute Truth personified, walking into this arena. And finally, when the Vrishnis saw, when the relatives of the dynasty saw Krishna, then they thought, oh, here is our Paradevata. Here is the supreme, most worshipable personality coming into this arena. So in this way, Krishna, who is the embodiment of all rasa, was perceived differently by different personalities, and they experienced different tastes, different rasas when seeing Krishna. So Krishna is the absolute truth, and if someone has pure transcendental love for Krishna, only then can they actually perceive Krishna as he is. Therefore, in Gita, Krishna himself says, Anyone who has pure devotion for me, pure bhakti, only they can know me through this in complete absolute truth.
Okay. Very good. There are nine 